I'm actually really excited about this video because I've always been really interested in macroeconomics. And if you're someone who pays attention to the Fed meetings when they say uh, they're going to cut or they're going to hike rates based on the state of the economy and inflation, and you find that interesting, then this video should be right up your alley. Loose just means the same thing as expansionary, whereas tight means the same thing as contractionary. So that being said, we're looking at these various mixes. So loose basically means a boost. So if you're talking about loose monetary policy, that would mean that they are dropping, likely dropping short-term interest rates. So that makes it cheaper for people to borrow, which encourages investment, etc. Now, tight monetary policy would be raising short-term rates. And this would be maybe because the economy is too hot or perhaps there's too hot that there's some level of inflation. And so now you're needing to tighten, which means typically rising short-term interest rates. Then there is loose fiscal policy. Now, fiscal has to do more with the government and government spending and government taxation. So loose fiscal policy would be the government providing a economic boost in a sense. So that could occur by either reducing taxes or raising government spending. Now, tight fiscal policy would be the opposite where you're, instead of giving the economy a boost, the government is actually taking some steam off the economy, and that could happen by increasing tax rates or decreasing government spending. Now let's take a look at some of these combinations. So one thing I want you to notice is that when the real, so we're looking at basically effects on real rates and expected inflation. So real rates plus expected inflation equals the nominal rates of return. And so we see that when the fiscal policy is loose, real rates are high. So, and when the fiscal policy is tight, real rates are low. So we can conclude that the real rates are based on the fiscal policy. Now you can see as for expected inflation, when the monetary policy is loose, we see that expected inflation is high. That's why when inflation starts to get very high or out of control, people start talking about the central bank of whichever country is involved quite a bit. Um, in the U.S., they'll talk about the Fed chairman a lot when there's problems with inflation because this is monetary policy. Now, if there's tight monetary policy, then you'll see the expected inflation would be low. So we can lead to the conclusion that expected inflation is based on the monetary policy. Now, the overall effect on the nominal rates is just a combination of these two, the real rate plus the expected rate. So if both are high, then we expect nominal rates to be high. If one's low and one's high, then we expect nominal rates to be mid-level. And then if both of them are low, then we expect the nominal rates to be low. Now, let's dive into the next part, which is with regard to business cycles and the business cycle phases, which there are five of them. And we'll talk specifically about how the yield curve behaves over the five business cycles. Now, one thing I just wanted to note is that there's going to be a lot of talk of flattening, steepening, inversion of the yield curve. And just in case anyone's not familiar with these, I'm just going to go ahead really quick and outline uh, what this means. And if you already know, just feel free to skip ahead the, to the next minute or so. When looking at the yield curve, we have the vertical axis over here, which is the interest rate. And then on the horizontal axis, we have the maturity. So over here is basically a short-term maturity, then a mid-term maturity, and long-term. So this could be like, you know, three months to a year or something. Mid-term might be 
like, I don't know, five to 10 years or so, and then long-term could be like 20 to 30 years or so. So a steep yield curve would be one where it is upward sloping like that. So there is long-term interest rates are higher than short-term interest rates, and this would be expected in the normal state of the economy. Now, flat is basically when the short-term midterm and long term are all equal. This would happen either shortly before a recession or shortly coming out of a recession. And we'll talk more about why that is when I talk about inverted yield curve, which is basically when short term is higher than long term. And basically, usually an inverted yield curve is thought to be a leading indicator of a potential recession. So if the yield curve gets inverted, then people think that this economy is going to go into a recession. So right before that happens, it would have to basically go from steep, convert into flat, and then eventually become inverted. So this flat would happen before that inverted happens. Or let's say the recession has already happened or didn't happen, but now the yield curve is recovering to a more normal state, it would go back to flat, and then eventually it would assume it's more even, uh, or it's more normal long state form by becoming more steep. So basically it's switching from this to this, and then from like this to this, and then this to this over time. So let's dive into these five business cycles, which are all listed over here. These are a cycle, so Perhaps the economy was in a contraction. Then what happens after the contraction is a initial recovery. And then after the initial recovery should be the early expansion. Then after that, the late expansion, then the slowdown. And then once again, back to the contraction. And then all the way back up again to the initial recovery. And just happens in this cycle. So let's talk about uh, each phase. So I actually am gonna start down on the contraction. So this is what I was talking about earlier and I said recession, you could also say contraction, which basically means um, the economy is doing very poorly and usually this is indicated by an actual fall in GDP or a, a, a serious decline in GDP growth. So in the case that the economy is in a contraction, for the monetary policy, the Federal Reserve is going to, or the central bank of the specific country, is going to be more stimulative. And by more stimulative, what do we mean? We mean that they're going to lower the short-term rates because lowering interest rates helps boost the economy and business and investment because it becomes cheaper to borrow money so people can borrow money and then do stuff with that money. So they're going to say that in this case, the curve would be steepening and the short-term and long-term rates decline. Now, I wanted to point out the central bank only really has control over the short-term rates. So short-term rates are definitely going to decline because the central bank is going to make them decline by being more stimulative. Now, after we get out of that contraction, we're going to go into the initial recovery phase. And this is when they're going to transition to some level of tightening. So this is when the yield curve would be at its most steep level and the short-term rates begin to rise because tightening or, yeah, tightening, just think of that as raising short-term rates. Whereas we said before, stimulative or stimulating would be dropping short-term rates. So now we'll see that in the initial recovery phase, the long-term rates will bottom out. Now we go to early expansion. So stimulus policy slows. So the curve is flattening and the short-term and long-term rates are rising. So in this case, that means that they're going to raise those short-term rates. Now we get to the late expansion now they're becoming more restrictive, the central bank policy. So this is when that curve flattens, like I talked about before, because the short-term rates uh, rise above average. And then 
rising, they approach their peak, and long-term rates uh, more slowly, I would assume that this would mean more slowly decline. And here again, the central bank is raising rates. And then finally, in the slowdown phase, this will be tight. So again, they're going to raise rates, which will put those short-term rates near their peak. And this is when the yield curve becomes flat to inverted. And then after the slowdown, we see that this curve is getting flat to inverted. What did I say about inverted yield curves before? Well, inversion can be a sign that a recession or a contraction is coming. So you get that inverted yield curve. And now you're going back to contraction. And you just play out that whole cycle once again. The video you just watched is a part of UWorld's comprehensive CFA programs. Get 25% off any of these products using the promo code RYAN25 and the link in the description or the pinned comment. Thank you for watching.